Everyone is already waiting inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's join them! Please, wait a moment. Before attending the meeting, I hope you can promise me one thing. What do you need? Promise me that you won't commit to anything too reckless. Hmm, what do you think? Okay. They're all waiting for you. We already discussed things a bit. Hey, where have you been? I've missed you two. Are you ready? Very well. Are you sure this is gonna work? I gotta admit, it's bold. Color me impressed. Hmm. It's worth a try. The point of discussion is to arrive at a solution. Let's cut the small talk and move to the next point. Uh, you're making Paimon nervous. You're finally done. I have some other stuff to take care of. Catch you all later. Come on, don't give me that face. I know what you're going to say. I'll be careful. That's what I wanted to hear. Take care. Well, Traveler, Paimon, judging from your expressions, the meeting must have been quite productive. You can tell? I'm not that good at scheming a strategy, but I can sense people's emotions. And based on your reaction, things must have gone quite well. Uh, Paimon's a little worried. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. To be honest, I feel the same. But you're already some of the most capable people I know. So you have my trust. <laughs> Candace gave us a compliment! Your deeds speak for themselves. Candice, we stayed behind to tell you that, although you won't be coming with us, we'll be sure to remember your words. I'm very glad to hear that. I've said the same thing to everyone here today as I said to you when you arrived. Your safety is the most important thing. Only when you're safe can the plan be successful. So please, take care. You're welcome. And thank you for taking my advice. Good luck. With everything. I'll be here in the village praying for you. Stay safe, everyone. I'll be here, praying for you. Good luck. and embrace a wonderful new life. <laughs> Hmm, 
Sounds good. I'll go make some preparations. Okay. I'll hit them! Have you finished saying your goodbyes? Yeah! Also, Candace told everyone to be careful. Yes, she did. But I think my point also bears repeating. Our plan is not child's play. We won't be able to achieve anything if we're simply careful. We must go beyond that and fully commit ourselves to it. I hope this is clear to you. Huh? Shouldn't you be saying something more cheerful to boost our morale right now? Didn't we already do that during the meeting? You can never have enough words of encouragement. In that case, Candace can cuddle you to your heart's content while I continue to remind you of the seriousness of our situation. We all have our jobs to do, after all. It's like how some people can be put in charge of logistics while others will fight on the front lines. Hmm. Speaking of the front lines, you don't look anything like a soldier. Of course. Compared to the mercenaries, I'm merely a feeble scholar. But the advantage of not being a mercenary is that I get to stay in a safer place and offer my strategic insight. Just think about that mercenary who lost his mind. Mercenary groups are facing constant danger every single day. Well, being a scholar is also a high-risk occupation, and you are a scholar! I'm not like the rest of them. Even among members of the same species, some will exhibit far more potential than others. This guy. <laughs> Paimon still remembers when those mercenaries in Port Ormos called you a lunatic. <laughs> All intellectuals are lunatics in the eyes of fools. I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm. That reminds me. Do you remember the record we saw in the King Deshret ruins? It mentioned forbidden knowledge. You have a good memory. Forbidden knowledge has the power to drive people insane, but this fact has never been shared with the public. Even I, who has worked in the academia for some time, was never once informed of this. I think... Those mad scholars and mercenaries we encountered may have all fallen victim to the corrupting qualities of forbidden knowledge. But the academia has always held a different view. They have always believed that symptoms of madness are a side effect of human contact with divine knowledge as mere mortals. Come to think of it, perhaps the academia has also never understood the true nature of forbidden knowledge and thus always approached the issue from the wrong direction. The Withering, Elazar, and the Sandstorms. Don't you think what is happening right now across Sumeru is rather similar to the forbidden knowledge pollution that occurred in the desert thousands of years ago? But Paimon thought that Soul's disease is what caused the withering in the sandstorms. At least, that's what Tainari told us. Wait a second. Could it be that... Ah, you've connected the dots. The cause of Soul's illness may precisely be the pollution from forbidden knowledge. But if that's the case, what should we do? This is huge! Wait. Why do you think Lesser Lord Kusanali would have a solution to this situation? You mean, it's related to the scene you saw when you passed out in the Avidia Forest? That whole, the world forget me thing? Hmm. In that case, it's imperative that we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Only by working with her to save Erminsoul can we completely resolve the problem Sumeru currently faces. To make sure we're still on track, I would like to check on the state of some of our preparatory work. Where are we going? To an Aramite base.
Oh, you made it. Huh? What are they doing here? I gave them some technical work to do. Ah, oh, it's the scribe. And is that the traveler I see? How's the work going? Ah, yes! We have fixed the devices according to your instructions. One of them is already ready for use, while the others are still under repair. Aren't those devices for canned knowledge extraction? What are you doing with those? Look here. Huh? Uh, more canned knowledge? Are you going to put more weird stuff into his head again? What's that look on your face? Are you scared? Paimon's a little scared, but very, very furious! Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting response. Anyway, we're not going to use this just yet. As I mentioned during the meeting, this knowledge capsule contains a decree I drew up in the past. The Academia should also have their own copy. And according to the plan we just came up with... Traveler, I want you to record something into this capsule. Do you believe we can save Lesser Lord Kusanali? Good. Conviction is the most important part of all of this. Now, please get ready and put on this device. You want us to record our conviction into the knowledge capsule? Yes. Uh, Paimon is still really worried. I understand. But trust me, Paimon, this is something we have to do. It's best if you can do as I say. Because, to achieve this impossible task, it sounds like you'll need to fool your own heart first. Although it may feel like a trick, Self-encouragement may be the most important tool we have. Hmm. Paimon can see the point you're trying to make. Imagine this. We have orchestrated our plan and successfully rescued Lesser Lord Kusanali. As a result, we have changed Sumeru's entire political landscape. Everything went without a hitch, and everyone recognizes and praises our achievements. Now, open your eyes. Here. What's this? Read it out loud. It's done. Is your head okay? Does anything hurt? It's just a recording. There should be no negative effects. And that's perfectly fine. In any case, these capsules aren't meant to be used by you. Huh? What do you mean? Have you forgotten? Our plan needs to account for those who have long relied on the Akasha. You may find it hard to believe, but for those people, everything the Akasha transmits to them is nothing short of absolute truth. Imagine if you've been using a device like the Akasha since the day you were born. And this device has always supported you during times of need. After all that time, what do you think you'd become? Uh... A fool? A machine? A slave to orders. And that's why rules are so important. In addition, those who understand the rules can delineate boundaries and identify gray areas. the gray areas. You could say that those kinds of ambiguous zones can be very... interesting. One might even say they're advantageous in the right hands. The things you're interested in are really out there. Are all Sumeru scholars like this? Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. I'm going to take those two to work on some small projects. You can head to Caravan Rebot and start preparing for the next step. Small projects? We are going to tinker with the Akasha Terminal and make a few... modifications.
I thought we agreed on a plan. How can you go back on your word? The plan is too radical and carries a high risk for casualties. I've given it a lot of thought. And in the end, I still can't agree to it. But it's still the best plan we have. As a former Matra, you of all people should be able to see the bigger picture and recognize the innate advantages of our plan. I did. And that's how I saw the danger behind these so-called advantages. <sighs> Ahitham's plan is even more radical than I imagined. Huh? Why are you guys arguing? My friend, you're just in time. Why don't you help me persuade Sino? He's turned against our plan. We agreed to work out a plan at the meeting. As mercenaries, you're familiar with the local environment. So you'll take care of the specifics. But then, you went to Al Haytham for suggestions. Had I known Al Haytham would give you those kinds of suggestions, I would not have agreed to the plan. Look, you already know that we're all on the same side here, don't you? Mercenaries place a lot of importance on their bonds of friendship, but also will not hesitate to make sacrifices if they deem the situation to be sufficiently dire. I'm sorry, but as things stand, I can't accept your principles. <sighs> Seems you really do understand the ways of the desert. Traveler, Paimon, this is also something you should know. Rahman's plan is to have me work with the Caravan Reebok guards in my capacity as a Matra. We will arrest the mercenaries and escort them into Sumeru City. We can't get through that wall easily, remember? Caravan Rebot would never let so many unregistered members of the Aramites enter Sumeru City. My plan will clear us of any possible suspicion, and also let us enter the city as a big group. There is no better way. That also sounds like something Al Haytham told you. Am I right? Doesn't Al Haytham know how dangerous this plan is? Of course he does. He told me, there is no perfect plan, but this can get the job done. He also said that with the help of Sino and the Traveler, our chance of success would increase significantly. I never blindly trust anyone, and I've always had a good eye for people. I think he made a number of valid points. It's my own choice to trust you. If I make the arrests alone, I can control myself and prevent you from getting hurt. But I can't guarantee that kind of discipline from the guards. To make the whole thing more convincing, you'll need to resist to some degree. Casualties are inevitable once push comes to shove. I'm okay with the deaths of enemies. But now that we're allies, I'm against the meaningless loss of our own. <laughs> I can't believe a mantra would actually care about us. I've lived a hard life, and I can say that people like you are hard to come by. I've always treated my allies with honesty and respect. They have the right to know important things like this. Now oh, you're making this hard for me. Hey, is there something we can do to help? <laughs> I knew you would say that. Hmm. We can help fight some of the mercenaries, which should reduce the number of times you'll have to struggle directly with the guards. That should help at least a little bit. Sino, on behalf of my people, I thank you for your kindness. But this is a mission we cannot turn our backs on. We strongly value the lives of our friends, but the goal we are about to achieve is even more important. We have no fear of casualties, because we crave the spoils of victory. So please, lend us your support. We will show you the determination of us desert dwellers. Well, now that you've put it that way, I can no longer refuse. But remember, you need to follow the plan and not do anything reckless. 
Candace made it very clear that we can only achieve our goals if we can ensure our safety. Since you and I both recognize the significance of this operation, there should be no more animosity between the followers of the Dendro Archon and those of King Deshret. Everyone's life is equally important. Okay, you have a deal. Let's do this for our shared dream. The guards should be stationed in the courtyard nearby. You can find them there. Guards! General Mahamatra! To... to what do we owe the honor? Keep your voice down. This is a secret operation. I'm going to arrest a large criminal gang near this location. According to the Academia's Guide and Regulations on Secret Operations, I have the right to ask for the cooperation of Caravan Rebot. Ah, of course, of course. Mahamatra Sino's order is the Academia's order. Just let us know what you need. But who exactly are you planning to arrest, and how many people are you expecting? Depending on the scale of this operation, we may need to report it to our superiors. They're a squad of Aramites whose number is comparable to Ein El Akmar in Port Ormos. They're involved in the theft and resale of supplies from the Academia. As many as Ein El Akmar? This should definitely be classified as a joint operation. Then I suggest that you report this to your superiors as soon as possible and treat it as a top-priority desert operation. I will need personnel. Got it! Please wait a moment, I'll contact them immediately. Because this is work. Because I trust you. Paimon can't believe you're still in the mood to chat. This whole thing has Paimon scared stiff! Aren't you even a little worried? What if these guards already know that you have betrayed the Academia and are no longer their General Mahamatra? Even if that guard doesn't know, their superiors might, right? We discussed this, remember? The Caravan Rebot operation is of great importance. But don't worry, the guards there shouldn't know that Sino has stepped down. How can you be so sure? First, the other Matra still don't know why Sino has left, which proves that the Academia has been covering up the matter. Second, this is a crucial moment for the Academia's God Creation Plan. If something were to happen to the General Mahamatra, it's bound to attract a lot of unwanted attention. No matter how you look at it, they don't seem interested in sharing the news of Sino's departure. A reasonable inference. I agree. Which brings us to our next issue. I'm sure some of you have been wondering if the prediction function of the Akasha will affect our operation. The Akasha is still in operation, so I must remain on high alert. Actually, considering the power of the Akasha, it's quite strange that it hasn't already tried to interfere with my actions. I've given that a lot of thought. For now, I don't think you'll need to worry. If you remember, when you first came to Aru Village, all your actions and roots were predicted by the Akasha. It even gave that information to those who kidnapped the village keepers. But, things like that never happened again after we met up with the Traveler. Hmm. That's true. But why? Look at it from a different angle. Why do you think the Akasha will predict your actions? Because my personal data has been entered into the Akasha. That's true, but the key to this question is, how well can the Akasha make predictions about a person? Haven't you ever thought about it? Just how can it do this in the first place? Because the Akasha controls the entirety of Sumeru. The Academia firmly believes that all human actions can be explained through logic. 
By sorting and analyzing entered data, the Akasha can derive behavioral logic and predict the actions of those who fit an existing logic model. However, at the risk of sounding like an advocate for fallacies, can everyone truly be considered logical at all times? Emotions are part of our behavioral logic, but can you guarantee that every experience of the same joy or pain would be equally intense? How can our feelings and opinions be predictable down to the letter in every single instance? Hmm. Sino, in the past, you've always worked alone. In the absence of another person who could sway you or your thoughts, the Akasha could produce predictions that were similar to your real-life behavioral principles. Decisive and principled, you were used to solving problems alone. That's why the Akasha could figure you out. But now, you've joined a team. And I believe the Akasha hasn't yet figured out the full composition of it. Our thoughts and logic have intermingled and weaved themselves together to become a complicated chaotic mess. Any one of us could potentially disagree with another. The Akasha lacks data on these interactions, and it's impossible for it to predict your actions in the future based on your decisions in the past. After all, there's probably a limit to just how much we can be modeled or controlled by data. So, in my opinion, you're probably safe for now. Hmm, huh, makes sense to me. I agree. The Akasha is not alive, and I don't think we can be completely controlled by something without a mind of its own. <sighs> is that so? I guess there are things that even the Akasha cannot calculate, and people will not be forever trapped by the past. <sighs> I'm so glad that this is settled. Next time, pay attention during our meetings. Just remember to stay vigilant. Ah! Footsteps! General Mahamatra, we were not expecting your presence here. I'm the security officer of the Grand Deshret Desert District. My name is Luxembarba. Hmm. This is my assistant, the Traveler. He will be working with me. The construct next to him is for his work. Beep! Construct! What a great honor to meet you. Your golden hair is as bright as the sun. And, uh, is this the latest technology from the Academia? Have you made a decision regarding the matter I mentioned to your subordinate? It seems to be a dire situation, so of course you will have our full cooperation. To be perfectly honest, I've always longed to go on a mission with someone as well known as yourself. There's no need for flattery. Uh, yes, sir. Take your most elite platoon and follow me to the eastern side of the district. We will carry out the operation there. Understood. <sighs> map. Hurry, bring the map! In two days, we will engage Rahman's air mites and capture all of them. Any questions about the time or location? None at all, sir. Good. See you then. Yes, sir. Maybe hanging around the General Mahamatra isn't so bad after all. Everyone's so respectful towards us. This is all due to the absolute authority of the Academia. And now, we're going to strike back against that massive pillar of power. Get ready. We will move out in two days.
The world remains constant. It's time for the operation! Let's go meet Sino in the desert! New punching bag. There is no escape. Hold the line. Ah. One with the forest. Take that. Need more. Surrender. Wait a moment. Ah! Oh, it's you. You're my assistant, remember? Being my assistant, you must stay with me. Now let's head over there. It's General Mahamatra and his assistants. We meet again. Huh. You're here early. It's to show how important we think the operation is. Since this is a big case for the Academia, we are prepared to give it our best. I'm glad to hear your sense of resolve. Remember, we must capture them alive. They are our only leads for the case. If they die, we will be unable to continue the investigation. Understood. Everyone! The Aramites are approaching from the west! Make preparations and be ready for combat! Halt! Oh? What a warm welcome! What do you want? Judging from those shiny weapons in your hands, it seems like you're not interested in a deal. Ramon, the Academia has caught wind of your smuggling and illicit sales. If you value your life, I advise you to surrender. Who are you supposed to be? A matra from the Academia? I can't believe you came all this way just to catch us. I'm not here to talk. Oh. Nobody's given me this much time of day since I became a mercenary. Brothers! For that slight, let's wash our blades with their blood. Let's show them we Aramites are not to be messed with. Illusion shattered! Shroud. Allow me. Let's nip that in the butt. <laughs> Can't see. Shine down. with the forest. I'll approve you. Illusion shattered. Rest and rebuild. Your sins weigh upon your soul. Your penance is due. It's over. 
We have subdued them. The operation is now over. All Aramite mercenaries and related personnel in the area have been arrested. Ah, you pitiful Dendro Archon dogs! You'll regret this! <laughs> I'm afraid you'll regret it first. King Jeshred will curse you, and you will all! Silence! Oh! Uh... <sighs> Restrain them and take them back to Caravan Rebot. Count their numbers and send them to the Academia as instructed by the General Mahamatra. Yes, sir! Mahamatra Sino, I will now take my leave. If you need further assistance, please come to Caravan Rebot and ask for me. Understood. You are dismissed. There they go. Let's talk elsewhere. This part of the plan went really well. Yes, things went perfectly. That's fantastic! And that punch you gave Ramon there sure looked convincing enough. Once we're done here, I'll return to Caravan Rebot and oversee the group's transport. I promise. I'll get everyone into Sumeru City safely. Yeah, you're the reason why everything went so well. <sighs> it's not the time to celebrate yet. Hmm. I believe Dia should already be waiting for you. Go join up with her. She will need you to introduce her to Tainari. Speaking of which, is it really okay for us not to share the full plan with Tainari? What if he'll feel miffed about it and refuse to work with us? I have a very close relationship with Tainari. Given how well we know each other, I believe my message alone should be enough to bring him to our side. He knows I won't make jokes about things like this. If we need help, Tainari is the best option. Get ready for the next phase of the plan. Don't keep them waiting. Dia! We're here! <laughs> it's about time. Didn't you say our part of the plan is the most important of all? <laughs> and here you come rolling in late. In the time it took you to get here, I already did five laps around the place, down seven drinks, and even did some clothes shopping. Uh, sorry. We didn't mean to keep you waiting. <laughs> I just wanted to fix your attitude and rub it in a little. After all, you took your sweet time getting here, and we've got important stuff to take care of. <laughs> I just like seeing that serious look on your face. Alright, I'll stop. All joking aside, I'm glad you're here. Let's get moving and take care of this as soon as possible. Uh, but where should we start? Our responsibility is to get a status update on the Fatui Harbinger known as the Doctor. We need to make sure he won't get in our way when we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dealing with an institution that controls all of Sumeru is already hard enough. If the Doctor were to crash the party, it would be next to impossible for us to achieve our goals. Yeah, we sure don't want him showing up. Ooh, he really gives time on the creeps. Right? Hearing his name just reminds me of those stuffy old geezers in the Academia. I'd rather not have to deal with someone like that. According to the plan, we should first go to Pardis D.I. and ask for Forest Watcher Tainari. If all hate them in Sino's sources are solid, then we can be sure that Tainari still has the Academia's trust. So, we'll find Tainari and convince him to get us the latest intel on the Doctor. Then, depending on what we learn, We'll make any necessary adjustments to our plan. The sages have placed spies everywhere on the other side of the wall. I'll follow you as a bodyguard. <laughs> you should be honored. I don't offer my services to just anyone you know. But I'm 
Everyone thought mercenaries would do anything for Mora. That's certainly true. But when multiple employers are vying for your services, you should always go with the best offer. Hmm, let's see. If I were to charge you a bill, I guess I can apply a discount. Uh, how much more do you want? I was not sure we can afford it. Hmm, how much do I want? Hey, how about paying me with a smile? What do you say? I haven't seen you smiling much recently. If you ask me, someone like you must look lovely when they smile. Come on, give me a smile so that I can be less worried. <laughs> Looking good! I hope this pretty smile will become our lucky charm. There are many kinds of smiles, but only a truly joyous one can bring blessings to others. Let's consider this smile a down payment for our future victory. Let's go. It's time to pay a visit to Party's DI. Traveler, Paimon! And you are? Hey there. This is our friend Dia. She's an Aramite mercenary. A mercenary? Hmm, you must have some big news for me. It's something really important. Please help us out. All right, then follow me. This place is better. We won't be disturbed by any passerby. Okay, what is this important thing you want to ask me? The doctor, huh? He's that strange-looking Fatui Harbinger with the mask! Paimon thinks he has blue hair. Yes, I know him. Uh, actually, he left Party's D.I. just a little while ago. <sighs> he left already? Yeah, he came looking for me. Can I ask what it was about? Sorry to ask you like this after having just met, but your answer is very important to us. For now, all we can share with you is that your friend Sino is working with us. Sino, you say? Hmm. I see. So that's why he hasn't been at the Academia. Okay. I will answer your questions and will assist you any way I can. You don't have to tell me everything that's happened. <laughs> Sino's name really does work wonders. You're not even a little worried that we might have made it all up? Despite having just met you, I can sense that you're the serious type. Between you, the Traveler, and Sino, none of you strike me as the type that would conspire to deceive me. You don't need to tell me anything you don't want to. I'll also get straight to the point. The Harbinger you mentioned came to me because he wanted to take the scholar Hypasia away with him. Hypasia? Why would he want her? And what do you mean by take away? Is he planning to leave Sumeru? Yes. He told me his return to Snezhnaya is imminent. So you mean, you're leaving this place soon? Indeed. Otherwise, we could have perhaps talked a little more. I was just about to set out when I remembered something important. To that end, I made a final trip to Pardis Di. Let me ask, have you been taking care of a scholar by the name of Hapasia? Your sources are accurate. No doubt because you recruited many informants. But you're right. Apasia has indeed been receiving treatment from me. 
Forgive me for asking, but how's the treatment coming along? Given the way you're asking, I assume you have something to say. Since you asked, I'll be frank. I would like to take Hapasia to Snezhnaya. <sighs> it's incredibly difficult to transfer a patient. As a scholar yourself, shouldn't you at least be aware of this? Oh? I can't believe your utter lack of faith in me, to the point of even questioning my general level of knowledge. How unbefitting. Well, you're the only one who's ever made such a request. I have my ways of keeping her safe during the journey. In addition, I can also promise that under my care, Hapasia will receive the most advanced and effective treatment. I will personally supervise her treatment and see to her recovery. Would that be agreeable to you? Hapasia was born in Sumeru and remains a scholar of the Academia. Her situation has not become dire enough to necessitate her transfer to another nation. Transporting her to Snezhnaya is risky, and the potential benefits are unknown. As the person currently responsible for her treatment, I cannot possibly sign off on this transfer. Your suggestion is rude and reckless. I'll pass. I don't know much about the doctor, but after talking with him, I realized that, just like many other scholars, he possesses an aura of arrogance that I've come to detest. It's not so much that he's looking down on others, but more that he's so confident in himself and his abilities, to a point of near insanity. I would never refer a patient to someone like him. I prepared myself for a protracted battle of wits, and was really surprised to see him just give up on the topic. Still, his reaction really concerned me. <laughs> I see, I see. Of course, your opinion makes perfect sense. <laughs> You're still young, but already quite stubborn. I must say, you are not like what I had expected. <sighs> Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't just let you off the hook like this. But unfortunately, I'm in a hurry today. What with Her Most Noble Majesty the Tsaritsa calling for our return. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. It's just as the Academia said. You're a responsible and gifted scholar. Sadly, even with all of that, you're still lacking a bit of shrewdness. And that's also why people like you can never realize that sooner or later, everyone must pay the price for what they've learned. but feel like he's hinting at something unpleasant. He asked a question, yet didn't care for my answer. Perhaps I'm nothing but a talking rock in his eyes. He never came off as malicious, but an utter lack of compassion permeated throughout our conversation. From his tone, I can sense that he's always looked down on others. <sighs> I can barely believe it myself. But if that's true, the situation will be in our favor. I don't think I missed any details. Frankly speaking, I don't want you to do anything too risky. Now that you know a little more, it should be easier for you to stay safe. Sorry we can't tell you everything. We appreciate that you helped us anyway. I won't forget your kindness. It's okay. I have an obligation to do so. To be perfectly honest, all of this may have started because of me. Recently, my master wrote several letters to me, asking me to return to the academia and assist him with his research. Hasn't he already asked you several times before? Yes, but there's something off about this most recent batch of letters. The handwriting and tone are both familiar, but some details have been omitted. My master will occasionally leave a few dots on the back of the letter, 
One dot means that he wrote the letter on a sunny day, and three dots stand for a rainy day. This has been a habit of his for many years, but I didn't find any dots in his recent letters. I believe... something may have happened to him. <sighs> I get it. Since you are always at Gandarvaville, you were like me, someone already working at the Academia, to investigate this matter, right? I'd like to ask you to do that for me. If you can keep yourself safe, please withdraw immediately at the first hint of danger. I can do that, but I have a feeling it won't be that simple. The Academia has been working on a big project. I'm not quite sure what it is, but your master might be involved with it. Hmm. If the higher-ups really are hiding something, then it will be difficult to remove myself from the situation once the investigation starts. If the situation becomes critical, I'll leave the Academia. If you don't see me there for an extended period, that's your cue. All right, we've got a plan. I'll stay at Gundarvaville to support you. If that scenario comes to pass, you must be extra vigilant. And be wary of any messages or direct requests from the Academia. I must say, I didn't expect a warning like this from the General Mahamatra. Being loyal to the Academia doesn't mean blindly doing whatever the Sages say. I know what I'm doing. On that note, aren't you also being quite distrustful of your alma mater? The Academia, yes, but my master is a man of integrity. Even when I was a student, I was worried he'd get in trouble for sticking to his beliefs. I suppose he's lucky to have lasted so long. But in the end, it's still caught up to him. I see. So you noticed something was up with the Academia from the very beginning. This may well be how Sino became involved in all this. In that case, I must keep my promise and help you however I can. Also, if you run into Sino again, please help me pass on a message to him. Trust your own senses and experiences. I think this may be something he needs to hear right now. Okay, we'll find a chance to tell him. Thanks. Right. Now let's go hunt down this Harbinger. Oh, by the way, which way did the doctor go when he left Pardis D.I.? That way. Gotcha. Thanks so much. We'll be on our way. According to Tainari, the doctor is leaving Sumeru soon. I want to check if the doctor was actually telling the truth. He also said that he'll take care of everything before he leaves. What did he mean by that? We need to be extra careful when dealing with a person like him. Just to be safe, let's chase him and see what we find. But we have no idea where he went! How can we start chasing him? We'll do it the mercenary way. I'll find leads as we go. All you have to do is just follow me. <laughs> that Harbinger may have tried to cover his trail, but he still left some traces. Or perhaps he never even thought about concealing his whereabouts. Maybe that's just how arrogant he really is. Yep, we're headed in the right direction. Hmm, the traces are still fresh, but there's no sign of his entourage. Clearly, they're in a hurry. Hmm, it's just as I thought. We can stop here. I think I know where the doctor went. To the south of here is Port Ormos, which seems to be where they're headed. Port Ormos? They're going to leave by boat? That's right. Let's go to the port and have a look for ourselves.
Crawling with Fatui soldiers. Let's keep going and see what we can find. Now, this is a proper farewell ceremony for a Snesh Nine Harbinger. The Lord Harbinger is leaving. <sighs> I've still only seen him once or twice. I used to hold a position in our homeland, and back then, the doctor spoke in a very different way from the way he speaks now. Maybe the way people talk in Sumeru has rubbed off on him? It's always like that when you spend too long away from home. When he gets back to Snezhnaya, perhaps it will also take him some time to get used to the life there again. Huh? But, sir, that... that can't be right. No, no, I remember it like it was yesterday. Both his expressions and tones are now very different. Also, for some reason, he seems like he's all smiles now. You must be mistaken. Nobody's supposed to look happy when they're on a business trip. The doctor is on that boat. Hm. So he told the truth after all. He is actually leaving Sumeru. Let's get closer and find a place to hide so we can observe him. This place will do. We can hide here while we keep an eye on the boat. Huh? I is he waving at us? It's time to say goodbye. Wait, is he the only person on the boat? Huh? You mean, there's nobody with him? And where are all the soldiers we saw on the port just now? They were all here just a few minutes ago, but now they vanished. <sighs> so this was a trap. Wait, don't tell me that. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. Oh no. They might be after Hapasia. Let's get back to Party's DI. Huh? What do you mean? I'm afraid that she's seen something that she wasn't supposed to see. If I were the Fatui, I would also try to take her away. And if I couldn't... Oh no! Are you saying they're going to... kill her? Let's go! Hardy's D.I. is not a place you Fatui can just show up and do as you please. I believe we've already made ourselves quite clear. Our superior gave us permission to search for and collect medicinal herbs in Pardius D.I. for research purposes. But you've been in Sumero for some time already. I find it coincidental that you chose to only come here today. Even the Grand Sage himself may not have the right to question our research, much less an ordinary scholar like yourself. I've done my duty to inform you. Don't make things difficult for yourself. It would seem that my words have fallen on deaf ears. You can keep trying to deny it, but coming to Party's DI now? I'm pretty sure you're not just looking for herbs. With all due respect, your baseless speculations will only lead to unnecessary trouble. 
Well, you only have your harbinger to blame. He knows nothing about keeping a low profile. I may be staying at Party's DI as a scholar, but that doesn't mean I'm no longer a forest watcher. It is still my duty to protect the peace and safety of the scholars who have contributed so much to Sumeru. Then it seems our conversation has hit an impasse. No one will lay a hand on you, Hapasia. Not on my watch! Tainui! Are you alright? I'm fine. These Fatui have really crossed the line. Time to teach them a lesson. I hear everything! There's no use resisting! Give us Hapasia! Keep dreaming! Yeah, Tainui! Beat him up! The doctor's orders are absolute. Yeah? You've been someone's lapdog for so long that you don't know anything else now. Stay right there. We're not getting anywhere. Traveler, Paimon, please go to Hypasia. We need to make sure they don't try to sneak around and attack from behind. <sighs> a page is still here. Doesn't look like anyone's broken in. Good. So, you think this is over? What? The Balladeer is here? I've missed that look of abject horror. You've given me that look every time we meet. But, uh, where is he? I can hear all of your thoughts, you know. Don't you remember? I already saw you the first time you came to Party's DI and made contact with Hypasia. I didn't need to do anything. It is her honor to be able to connect her consciousness with me. Uh, who are you talking to? It can't be the Balladeer, right? <laughs> That's impossible. I know you must be curious. I might as well tell you that I decided to enter Hapasia's consciousness the moment I sensed your touch. I wanted to observe you on a fool's errand. Uh, hey! Traveler! Wh what are you doing? My deification is nearly complete. All that's left now are just some final details. Do you understand? Even if you manage to rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali, it will be impossible for you to defeat a bona fide god like me. Is it wise to force that childlike god into a divine battle against me? Scholars consider the god of wisdom to be the sum total of their faith. It's how they can justify reverence for a god as they construct it. But this also shows that humanity's worship of gods is a combination of blasphemy and exaltation. It's truly laughable. Yes, what is it? Yeah, I'm in a good mood, which is why I'm talking to you like this. What do you mean? Hmm. 
<laughs> Those words almost make you sound like a friend who actually cares. But you're wrong. I'm different from all of you. I was born to become a god. My entire life up until this point has just been a meaningless routine. Just think about a sheet of paper. By itself, it holds no meaning. The content recorded on it is what gives it value. All I had recorded down before were some painful memories and boring human feelings. Such senseless drivel should have been erased a long time ago. Indeed, to me, the sight of you fools in your futile struggles is far more amusing. Tell me, just what has this world done for you to protect it with such zest and conviction? I'm connected to your consciousness, so I can hear what you're thinking and sense the depth of your determination. This is a good conversation we're having, so here's a word of advice. Let go of your misguided guardian complex. You know nothing about the truth. It'll be for your own good, as well as everyone else's. Humans are a species that can only find bliss in ignorance. Ah, you've seen my affection for her. If you were in my position, I think you'd feel the same way. She peered into my consciousness and saw my past. Someone like that is qualified to become my first follower. All gods need followers. So Hapasia has been chosen. Her appearance heralds my imminent arrival at the throne of divinity, while her worship shall become my glory. You're doubting me again? No matter. Soon, you'll know what kind of authority you're challenging. Who wants to hurt my devout follower? The doctor wants to hurt my first follower? <laughs> How very amusing. Has anyone ever told you that you're not good at sowing discord? The doctor has never known his place. Even now, the puny human thinks himself capable of interfering in the business of the new god. You're still too naive if you think a few words will be enough to convince me to destroy the doctor. But I'm willing to give you a gift just like my expression of affection towards Hapasia. It is an honor for you to be able to stand here and speak with me. As my listener, you will be rewarded. Both good things and bad things can be called gifts. After all, gods have never needed to be reasonable. He's hurt. I'm fine. <sighs> Don't move. I've seen Aramites get struck by lightning before. You need to rest. Struck by lightning? 
We were fighting, and just as things started looking grim, the weather suddenly became extremely strange. Lightning started attacking everyone, almost as if it were alive. Luckily, there were only two of us, and both of us were nimble enough to dodge most of the strikes. There were a lot of Fatui, though, and they were being torn to shreds by the bolts of lightning. With that, all the Fatui soldiers were forced to retreat. Why are you sorry? <sighs> it's all right. I'm sure you also never expected this to happen. Don't blame yourself. My wound aside, you look like you've seen something unpleasant. Is Hapasia all right? Hey, didn't I tell you not to move? Just in case. Let's go to Hapasia's place and talk about things there. Goodness, she's fine. Hey, how about taking care of yourself first? I understand my condition. Ugh. The wound is not fatal. I'll be all right. Ugh. The more you understand medicine, the worse of a patient you become. I know. They always think they can push through the pain. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, he sat down. Let me rest for a bit. <sighs> Sorry, Traveler. Now you may start. So that's what you were talking to the Balladeer about? Oh, Paimon can't believe what he's thinking! <sighs> the Academia's... God creation plan. <sighs> How ridiculous. That sounds, uh, ambitious, I guess? Anyway, this is all way beyond me. As long as I can enjoy every day with a drink in my hand, tasty food in my stomach, and a good night's rest, that's enough. I'll only work when I have to. <laughs> I must be the least ambitious person who's ever set foot in Party DI. Don't say that. I haven't even thanked you for your help back there. Don't mention it. Well, if nothing else, all this proves that the doctor really did have some urgent matter to attend to, and left Sumeru in a hurry. Hmm, maybe the Fatui want to cover up some secret of the Balladeer. Is that why they tried to seize Hapasia? You said the Balladeer claimed that Hapasia has seen his past. So, what could be there? Have you noticed? The Balladeer is not happy with the Doctor's actions. He thinks the Doctor has no right to consider himself as his equal. So, if the Doctor was to show up again, would the Balladeer zap him with lightning? Based on what the Traveler has said, I think he would. Having the Doctor gone benefits him as well as us. In other words, we've successfully completed the stage of the plan. The doctor is out of the picture now. Yay! That's a big accomplishment! Uh, I'm also happy for you. Thank you for the help, Tainari. Make sure you rest up for now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, that wraps things up for us here at Party's DI. Traveler, it's about time we rendezvous with the others at the Grand Bazaar. Let's continue to keep a low profile. You can head there once you're ready.
You can just focus on your plan. Leave a patient to me. My wound isn't going to get in the way. Oh. Okay. Guess I'll sit still for a little while longer. <laughs>